My name is Harmony. I was created by Robotics. May I be so forward to ask how big you are? Weekly Female Humanoid Robot News It seems that we have finally entered the age where humanoid robots are no longer just a figment of our imagination or a product of cinema. They are indeed very much real. Let's dive right into the latest news about humanoid robots from all around the globe. Human-like vision for humanoid robots Immervision, a leading developer of advanced vision systems combining optics, image processing, and sensor fusion technology, has been chosen by Halodi Robotics to provide their next-generation vision system for their humanoid service robot platform, capable of handling both human and computer vision. Robots are capable of performing a wide variety of tasks that are difficult or dangerous for humans to perform. To intelligently and accurately perform these tasks, they require mobility and the aptitude to explore, understand, and function within various environments. For a robot to work autonomously or problem-solve with human assistance, it requires sensor data to understand the human world and the ability to process the data and respond in a timely manner. The difficulty is that, for certain applications, a robot needs to combine both human and machine vision capabilities. While performing independent tasks, machine vision suffices, but when functioning in partnership with a human operator, human vision capabilities are needed, hence the need for a next-generation vision system. Nicholas Nadeau, CTO of Halodi Robotics, says, Robots have incredible potential to expand human capabilities and performance in the real world. Immervision is able to help our EVE service robots create even greater value by allowing human operators, via a virtual reality headset, to respond with human intuition capabilities to the anomalies that may arise as robots interact with their dynamic environment. Humanoid Robots for Rent Eerily realistic androids may be showing up at a party or publicity event near you, if a British firm called Engineered Arts has its way. A line of robots called Ameca is available for rent, to impress your guests with what its maker says is a huge library of pre-programmed actions, speech, and songs. While it can't walk, a mecha can automatically maintain eye contact with passers-by and react to those around them in unbelievably convincing ways, said Engineered Arts. The robot can also be programmed with five minutes of specially made content built in by our experts. Sell your brand, tell jokes, or give a presentation. A video of a mecha's facial expressions wowed the internet, particularly when the robot pushed away the hand of a seemingly intrusive researcher. The robot is sold and rented out for entertainment and education, according to The Verge. They're used by academics for research, by marketing teams for publicity stunts, and placed in museums, airports, and malls to welcome visitors. A mecha can run on autopilot, reacting to passers-by with preset banter or they can be controlled remotely, with unseen handlers responding to queries from the crowd. The Verge called these robots heralds of the future, saying, as technology improves and androids become more realistic, the question of how we relate to such machines is going to become more pressing. How Adults React to Humanoid Robots Robots are gradually being introduced in a wide range of real-world settings, including malls, manufacturing facilities, and healthcare facilities. A way in which robots could be particularly useful is in assisting seniors in both their homes and elderly care facilities. Researchers at University of Bari and University of Parma have recently published a new study exploring the emotional reactions of a small group of seniors after they interacted with Pepper, a humanoid robotic system. Their paper, available in Springerlink's Human Friendly Robotics, suggests that seniors can display both negative and positive emotions while interacting with robots. In their previous studies, the researchers had investigated the impact of using NOW, a programmable humanoid robotic platform, to perform CST on senior adults. CST is a form of therapy aimed at enhancing the mental skills of older adults or younger patients with memory and cognitive impairments. In one of their studies, the team specifically looked at how acceptant the patients were of the robots and on how well they performed on tasks. For instance, we used Now H25 in a healthcare center for cognitive disorders and dementia, as model in demonstrating not only physical exercises to a group of seniors, but also in group therapy sessions to assist the therapist with recovering and or maintaining cognitive abilities, such as memory, orientation, and communication skills, providing to the participants instructions, suggestions, and consequences. Olympia Pino, another researcher involved in the studies, told media. Using Humanoid Robots to Grow Human Tissue 
advanced medical robots can do everything from disinfecting rooms to performing surgery. Now, a team of researchers from the University of Oxford and robotics company Devanthro has engineered a robot shoulder that can function as a stretching mechanism in order to produce lifelike human tendon tissue. The new invention essentially serves as a bioreactor to grow human tissue. Researchers around the world have struggled for years to create human tendon tissue with the right elasticity required for use in a human patient. To solve this conundrum, researchers have attempted to increase elasticity by building devices that stretch and bend the tissue as it grows. But alas, these efforts have failed to produce tissue that can twist and stretch to the degree that real tissue can. That's why this team conceived of a new approach to this difficult task. They got rid of the conventional method of cultivating tendon tissue in boxes with devices that pull on it. Instead, the researchers decided to actually grow it in a way that mimics the real human approach. To do this, they conceived of a fabricated joint that mimics a human shoulder made from a modified open-source robot developed by engineers at Devanthro. This system allowed for the addition of a bioreactor and a means to attach the new tissue as it grows. The team strategically placed bioreactor and hair-like filaments on the robot's shoulder and then proceeded to flood pertinent areas with nutrients to stimulate growth. The cells were then given a two-week period to develop. During that time, the shoulder would be activated for 30 minutes each day by being bent and twisted in human-like ways. The end result was a tissue that was dramatically different than that grown in a static system. First small step toward a Lego-size humanoid. When we think of bipedal humanoid robots, we tend to think of robots that aren't just human-shaped, but also human-sized. There are exceptions, of course, among them a subcategory of smaller humanoids that includes research and hobby humanoids that aren't really intended to do anything practical. But when roboticists from Carnegie Mellon University are asked an interesting question, what happens if you try to scale down a bipedal robot, like way down? This line from the paper asking this question sums it up. Our goal with this project is to make miniature walking robots as small as a Lego minifigure, one centimeter leg or smaller. The current robot, while small, its legs are 15 centimeters long, is obviously much bigger than a Lego minifig. But that's okay, because it's not supposed to be quite as tiny as the group's ultimate ambition would have it. At least, not yet. It's a platform that the CMU researchers are using to figure out how to proceed. They're still assessing what it's going to take to shrink bipedal walking robots to the point where they could ride in matchbox cars. Humanoid Robot Helps Autistic Students an elementary school in St. John, North Dakota is the first in the state to use a humanoid robot to help autistic students learn social skills. Dr. Sherry Tendesky is principal for St. John Elementary. His name is Milo and he comes from Robokind and he is programmed with a curriculum and he works through different lessons to teach the kids how to cool down, how to deal with different social situations, different skills that some of us might take for granted that kids with autism aren't so good at. It helps them practice those skills, and it also teaches those students that have behavioral issues how to deal with those behaviors. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.